Good evening, friends. We have a very special guest tonight with us. Someone you've all known for a long time and someone who's really progressed in life to achieve a lot of things. We're talking about yesteryear Bollywood actress, Somi Ali. Welcome, Somi. Thank you so much. It's an honor to be on your show. Thank you. Somi is a Pakistani-American actress, a writer, a filmmaker, a model, and an activist who's worked in Bollywood films. She runs a nonprofit organization named No More Tears since 2007. This organization fights domestic traffic, and they've been doing this for the past 17 years. She's also the recipient of the Barack Obama Proclamation Award for Rescuing Victims. So it's a, a big uh, welcome from our side as well. Uh, so maybe we've uh, watched some of your beautiful pictures as, as an actress and uh, how well you've done in uh, Bollywood movies. So uh, you've really progressed in life and achieved a lot for yourself. Thank you so much. It's been a long journey and a journey that has been turned since 2014. I initially decided to write a memoir, but I found it unsettling that, you know, my, my, my group was uh, Manisha, Tabu, Ravina. These were my friends. Uh, oh. Chi Chi would come home and would sit on the floor in, in Mount Mary. I had an apartment, we would have dal chawal. And, you know, so these were my, my, my people. And uh, I miss them so much because I left in 99 and I, you know, I reconnected with them not too long ago, thanks to uh, Prashant. And of course, Charul, who used to work for Charul Malik, used to work as a reporter for India TV, I believe. And now she is an actress and she referred me to Prashant. And I said, I want India to know that what Somi has been up to for 21, 22 years in and what all I have achieved and how many children and women we have helped from India. And that needs to be known. And, you know, Discovery Series then did a whole documentary. They followed me for three months. The first week was a nightmare. Then I got used to it. The cameras, they're in your face all the time when we're doing sting operations and everything. So, but it's been a journey and I've decided to write my book as a novel with names changed because it's not fair to uh, share my friends, my contemporaries or, uh, or my friends at that time uh, to what they told me in confidence to, to share that. It's, it's not fair. It's not a right thing to do. It's a very unethical and my moral compass does not uh, veer in that direction at all. Absolutely. Now, uh, uh, friends, since we have Somi, uh, she has a lot to tell us. And so what we thought was that we could speak to her in uh, parts, as in uh, there's so much that she would love to share with us. At the same time, uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, experience that she has had in Bollywood that uh, she would like to uh, convey to us. Because see, what happened was after the death of SSR, Sushant Singh Rajput, a lot has come to the fore. And all these things are exposed that the, uh, the Bollywood fraternity is a very hollow one. It's a, it, it's a, uh, it's a place where people have, uh, I'm not talking about all of them, but most of them are double-faced. So the first in, in this first uh, session with Somi, we'll be discussing the hypocrisy that exists in Bollywood and how relationships work there. Sometimes you th think that people are very friendly there, and then you find out that there's so much of cutthroat competition between them that they don't even you don't you find that they don't even talk to them the other. So this sort of uh, uh, you know atmosphere exists there. So, and as you know, we've been running this channel for the past four years, ever since Sushant Singh Rajput died, and there's been such a change in the in the industry with boycott Bollywood happening and so many other things happening. What are, what are your views on uh, this? And so we just, uh, you just free, just speak your mind and uh, you don't need to name anybody. That's no, totally- uh, So I, 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 I have a reputation of having no filter and I'm very proud of that. And my mom is also very encouraging about that because having been brought up from, uh, you know, in Florida, and being a Miami girl, 
I'll tell you a little uh, example of when I first, uh, I didn't know what rushes were or what trials were. And I was invited to a trial and I was 16. And it was one of my first trials that I saw. And when I walked out of the movie, I the, the uh, director and the producers asked me, I was 16 years old, and they said, what did you think of the film? And I thought, I said, I thought it was the worst movie I've ever seen in my life. And uh, please tell me that this is not actually going to go to cinemas. And I remember the co-star, we were in acting school together, yanked my arm, pulled me aside, and he said, Somi, you cannot say that when you watch Rushes. You have to say it's the the best film in the world. I was like, so you're telling me I have to lie. And a person who has zero filter and says what they think, so I, I learned uh, at 16 um, how, to, how to be uh, untruthful, uh, not that I was tr- extremely a saint prior to that either, but uh, you know, I, I did gr- grow up in a household where there was a lot of uh, chaos and trauma. And um, uh, with my education that I have attained, uh, in the past, you know, prior to starting No More Tears, which was in 2007, uh, my self-prognosis is the fact that um, uh, when people grow up with dysfunctional, uh, in dysfunctional households, they thrive in chaos. Hence, my picking uh, a, 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 a profession where uh, uh, one, I do not take a salary. It's a very unconventionally run nonprofit organization. And I do, uh, cannot sit behind a desk. I will go insane. I cannot sit in one spot. I do the rescue operations, be it human trafficking, be it uh, domestic violence victims. With the law enforcement, myself, I go by myself. I've had Matlab Abita art attacks ho chuke hain second attack to mere sar pe gun rakhi gayi thi ke ye this is a warning the next time you will be dead so um you know uh, i i picked a profession because of what i realized and i am in therapy uh because of my last attack it happened in december uh 6 tarikh ko 2022 mein a trafficker ne koi 70 80 times mega shoulder or neck or back me kick kiya tha to jab main uthi main behosh ho chuki thi jab main uthi to i was in a hospital and uh, a jo fbi or police officer jo unhone mujhe bataya ki kya hua to uh, abhi tak wo tendon uh, 2022 mein hua tha wo tendon abhi bhi broken hai तो इतनी बुरी तरह मारा गया था तो उन्होंने क्या किया कि उन्होंने मुझे ट्रॉमा थेरेपी में डाल दिया क्योंकि मुझे वो साथ वो आदमी तो ही इज गॉन 37 इयर्स तक वो प्रिजन में चला गया मगर मुझे नाइट पेयर्स आना शुरू हो गए कि वो लोगों को भेज रहा है मेरे पीछे मरवाने के लिए क्योंकि यू नो आई दे ट्रीट दीज दीज चिल्ड्रन दैट आर ब्रॉट फ्रॉम इंडिया and uh america uh, uh, or even american or russian or ukrainian that as commodities they're not they're not human beings they're properties right okay and, yeah and so, so we, uh, yeah so these are things that we can discuss in another session so okay. if we were to go back to uh okay. you know yeah just go uh back to uh you know bollywood and tell us See your experience over there. Sure. See, uh, you're not the kind of person who would fit into uh, the mold there because of the way you talk and the way uh, you, you express yourself. So do tell us what was your experience in Bollywood? Because for, uh, let me just give you a few examples. For example, uh, a lot of the actors, they uh, give, give out endorsements, brand endorsements. And uh, since uh, you know the social media is very sharp, they, right. they do not let you forget when you make a mistake. Right. So, uh, for example, Alia Bhatt said something about uh, promoting sugary drinks. And then she moved on to saying that she sugar is a dangerous, please avoid the sugar. So uh, we really don't know what uh, she, she's trying to propagate. Is she trying to propagate uh, something like sugar? Or is she trying to tell us that to stay away from sugar? So who is she? 
Similarly, you talk about a lot of people like uh, Akshay who promote all these good car products and say that, see, uh, you know, I did it because of a favor to someone. And then later he says, I'm going to not do these ads at all. And then he comes back in the same ad again with Shah Rukh Khan and with the others. So uh, what happens is that you really don't, can't trust the person who right. is there as an actor trying to tell you that I am the one you should be uh, emulating when you watch right. my movie. Right, exactly. So, so uh, okay, so uh, uh, because you're asking me uh, per, uh, my, my experiences and my perspective from uh, uh, I have to step outside of a, a woman who is no longer a 16 year old child. I have to step outside of this Sony and go into the mind tap time capsule of that Sony. So yeah. from 16 to 24, uh, cause I left in around, I, I was about to turn 25, which is when our brain fully develops. Uh, and, uh, so I, I was exposed to a lot of bad, uh, from the age of four, um, which no child should be exposed to. So there was always violence and trauma in my life. And I, I learned to accept that because I, I didn't know any better. I didn't know it was not normal. It was in our culture. Uh, I didn't. ये और आप में इतनी हिम्मत होती है कि you take that person to court while you're told not to do it because you will be grilled and embarrassed and I say no I will take him to court I want justice and that's when I realized well I realized at the age of around seven when I took uh, four Afghan refugees and hid them in my cupboard in Pakistan and, and let them play with my dolls and fed them the biryani because I felt bad for them because I was like, why are they on the streets and why are we living in such a big mansion? It makes no sense to me. And I think that's at that age, I, I realized that this is what I want to do with my life. Anyway, having said that, I will give you uh, whatever I tell you. Uh, it's it's an analysis of my uh, hindsight, right? Of my retrospect, of my looking back in time and try as I write uh, my my book, uh, and I try to try to analyze and and understand. Oh, that's what that was about. Oh, that's, that's what that was. So so let's let's assume we're speaking to Somi at sixteen. Uh, who comes, we know why, and we don't want to delve into that. I, I want to actually make a clarification, if you allow me, and we have time on something pertaining to that individual. Um, but I remember I used to go to Mangla Hall, and I don't know how familiar you are with India, with Mumbai, sorry. It used to be called sorry. Bombay. When because my parents were my my father and my grandparents were born in Bombay, there was no Pakistan. It was we were all Indians, right? So um, I remember that Mangla Hall, the jo rehearsal hall, hai, uske barabar me, uh, jo, uh, there were women, young girls, who sariya penke or bahut makeup lagake or wo rickshaw me jaati thi hamisha alag alag aadmiyon ke saath. So I was 16 I So I couldn't understand what was going on. So I was like, is there a fashion show? Because uh, keep in mind, I'm a Floridian girl. So um, I'm someone who would sit on the pavement and talk to the rickshawala and ask him about his life. Uh, and, you know, I, that's how we were brought up. We don't see any... Uh, I don't believe that labels make uh, uh are indicative of someone's uh, uh respect towards an individual i believe that 
your actions and your behavior towards an individual shows how much you respect them or disrespect them. Hence, I'm very anti-labels. And I always say, please call me so me, no so me, ma'am, so no so me, G, none of that stuff. But I know that it was a norm in India. So I abided by the norm and I gave that respect. And I did uh, touch feet of people that deserved that, uh, you know, uh, gesture. And I, I did what I, I, I thought was the right thing to do as a 16 year old child. But now when I look back in hindsight, and you know they say it's 2020 and i realized that those young girls were next to mangla hall there was a brothel that was being run and those girls were actual uh probably human trafficked or they were uh escorts or they were uh prostitutes and i don't think any girl in this entire universe as a child when she's four or five has a dream of growing up and becoming a prostitute or an escort or a sex worker there are circumstances and i i don't judge them because we've had cases of strippers we've had cases of prostitutes we've got it doesn't matter to us what religion caste creed doesn't matter gender uh sexual orientation we help people that are physically and verbally and sexually abused. That is our philosophy and mission of No More Tears. So now coming back to Somi at 16, it made sense what was going on next to Mangla Hall. And I was like, oh my God, I wonder if that place still exists. So, you know, on my bucket list, there's, I have to, I want to go to Italy. I want to go to India again. I want to go to Shiv Sagar and have Pao Bhaji. I go to, want to go to Elko Market and have, have Pani Puri. Um, I want to, you know, I want to start a talk show uh, because I want to pursue my, my degree in journalism. I want to do an American talk show and start small. And, um, you know, it, it, sh it has to be very diversified. It shouldn't be just about no more tears. And I want uh, people from every country in my talk show. And I really, I'm very fascinated by human behavior, hence psychology. Why do people do things that we do? Look, we all live lives like we live in a grocery store. We all pick and choose what, is, what suits us, what suits our conveniences, right? No one is purely good. No one's purely bad except Stalin and Hitler and child molesters and pedophiles and rapists and murderers. Having said that, maybe koi dooth ki dhuli bhi nahi. Jab mujhe pata chala ki jis wajah se main India aayi thi aur ye baat mere saath galat kiya ja raha tha, to us samay maine decide kiya tit for tat. And I'm my mother's daughter, and my mom has Arab blood. She's she fought hard when when dad had affairs with Unki heroines because he had affairs with his heroines. My mom would fight with him, and and she, like literally physically fight with him. Of course, she lost because men are physically stronger than women. So similarly, I did the same thing when I found out I was not going to achieve. Uh, and and the awe dissipated from the first uh, incident of violence. The awe of, of the, the actual hero dissipated in that millisecond of the first incident of uh, violence. And I realized that, um, you know what? This is, this is not, it's not going to work out. So I... Uh, decided, I was like, okay, there are reasons I can't go back to America. I had dropped out of ninth grade. I had no education. Um, uh, my mom was leading a very different life. Mom and dad were separated geographically to an extent where uh, my father had abandoned my brother, my mother and I, and I had to clean toilets and actual poop from toilets so I can feed my mother and my brother. So going from a 28 bedroom mansion to America cleaning toilets in a snooker club 
and uh, the owner of no. the club. What was your father doing? What was your father doing? Uh, I mean, as in profession, you say that he so, used to have so, a. So, so dad, so my dad has a very interesting story, and he, uh, you know, he used to study under the lamp posts in India, and and you know, he used to tell me stories about Bombay and. And, you know, because he was that, my grandparents are, you know, my grandfather was, was a Gujarati, Jain, and my, my grandmother was a Muslim. And, um, you know, and so I, I, I always say that they're, they're my, my grand, my uh, grandmother from mom's side, who's Iraqi, her, her husband, uh, her first husband was British. So I have British blood in me, Arab blood. I have Indian Hindu blood. I have uh, Muslim blood. And in the end, I, uh, I don't believe in dogma. I believe in spirituality and Buddhism and a higher power. I do believe in God. And I do believe that, that um, we all have, everything is written for us. And it's, what is supposed to happen will happen and no one in this world has the power because i'm not better than you and you're not better than me is what i believe in i strongly believe in and i tell people that that listen when you come to intern with no more tears especially these the youth of our today you better check your ego outside the door of no more tears is office because it's not going to work out there's no ego. There's no hierarchy here. We're all, I'm the president of No More Tears and I'm the plumber of No More Tears. And I have no shame in admitting that. So the, the, the point is that what I was exposed to was so dire that it went whoosh because I'm from Florida. And even though I had been uh, abused many a times, not once, many a times, and prior to entering India, I still was sheltered when it came to being street smart. So what I would do your is... Your father doing? You uh, forgot that bit. I'm sorry? Your father doing? What was oh, your sorry. father doing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I always go off on tangents. Okay. So my dad was a very successful film producer, director, and a director of photography. And I, as a four-year-old, used to act in his commercials. And I spent all my time sitting in all the, the heroines' laps, uh, Fazia Auntie, Sangeeta Auntie, and all these people that, you know, the big time heroines of Pakistan at the time before the age of eight, when, you know, at around eight or nine, I, we moved to America. So, uh, but my dad had um, affairs with them, and my mom would fight with my dad and fight. And I realized I'm living, reliving my mother's life, except my, I was an actress and I went after an actor and my mom ended up marrying dad and dad ended up marrying, and dad ended up having these affairs. So um, I, when I, when mom found out that dad was cheating on mom, she was like, screw this, I'm gonna have affairs too. When I found out what was being done to me, I said, you know what, I'll rebel. I'm a rebellious teenager. If you think that you can do this, because I was told as a man, only I can do this, and you know who I'm talking about. Well, but as a girl, you cannot do this. Now, you don't say that to a Floridian, Miami, rebellious teenager with a mom who's got balls of steel. And you don't say that to that girl, right? So as sheltered as I was, what I now at this age, as a middle-aged woman, I have realized that what the 17, 18, 19, 20, up to 24-year-old girl, young adult, a teenager to a young adult was seeking was someone to say, I love you and I genuinely care for you and you are worth something. And uh, that intimacy and affection, it wasn't sexual. It wasn't, it, it had nothing to do with sex. It was the yearning and the longing 
to find, which I couldn't find in the idol and the hero that they say you should never meet. And now I know why. Um, but, but I, what I, now I realize that, and I will not name those people, um, that they were using a, 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 a teenage child uh, for their own, uh, you know, whims and wishes and, and have me at their beck and call and me thinking this person actually loves me and he's going to either leave his wife or break off his engagement and he's going to marry me. And, and um, they would I wasn't uh, engaged at that time. I'm sorry. Was the person engaged engaged to someone at that? Time? Yes, yes. And I I was under the impression that this person would break the engagement and I would end up marrying him and I would finally get love. Now what had happened is dad had remarried in Pakistan at that time. And imagine being 16. Put yourself, I don't know if if, if uh, cause sympathy and empathy are two different sentiments. Sympathy is when you feel sorry for yourself. Empathy is when you can actually empathize and put yourself in that person's shoes and their life and their brain and their body. If you have the, the ability to empathize with the 17, 18 year old Somi, put yourself in my shoes and, and think about someone telling you that they you're, you're beautiful, I love you, and uh, leave this man that you're with because he's not good for you. And I will take care of you for the rest of your life. And I was told this by not one person, but people that were, uh, that I, uh, that were my actors, co-stars that were from my mom's era that I, I, I did four films with. And I was told, and then, uh, people I was in acting school with, uh, and, and, I was just like, I was very baffled. I was like, I don't know if this is true. Uh, I can't go to Pakistan because I, I have no interest in Pakistan. Uh, dad's remarried. He's moved on. Mom's got her, her own life. She's got her boyfriend. And, you know, she's living her own life and, and she deserves it. Why not? Yes, go for it. Live your life. You've been through hell. Uh, more Kudos to my mother you know, and, and, and if dad wants to remarry, that's his, his prerogative. It's fine. But I, on the other hand, uh, have to forgive. And in, in, in therapy, I'm learning. Um, I sent you a, a cover, uh, and I sent that cover to my therapist and she said, so me, you have to learn to be very kind to this 16 year old girl. And you have to learn to not only forgive her, but you have to learn to like her because you have a lot of disdain for her and you have a lot of uh, uh, regrets and remorse for this girl. And now we're speaking of not this Sony, we're speaking of another Sony. So during therapy, I was starting to understand what my therapist was, and she's a trauma ther uh, therapist, and uh, you know, and I was understanding because she has to go back from the age of four in order to heal me because I was diagnosed with PTSD and severe acute uh, trauma, not depression. Uh, uh, depression is circumstantial. You or depression is acute depression. It's an ailment. You, it's fatigue. You don't get out of bed for days. But my my depression was sadness, and it was circumstantial. No more tears. Ko donation ni mil gaye. Ye victim jo hai wapas apne husband ke paas chali gayi. Wo ko itna marta tha. Those were my uh, sadness, you know, situations. So there were circumstantial sadness uh, sentiments. Um, I was diagnosed with PTSD, post-traumatic stress dis uh, disorder, and uh, trauma, extreme acute trauma. So not only because of what happened in Pakistan with the servants and the rape in America at 14 and the stuff I endured in India, uh, not, on not only the abuse, but also the promises that were made to me. And I was so gullible 
that I told my therapist, I said, how could I be so dumb? And she said, stop, you need to stop right there. You were a child. These people were like 35. They were 45. Some of them were 50. You were a child. Your, your father was never around. The only time you saw your father, he was abusing your mother or you were seeing him shooting his films and he was reprimanding the actresses because he was a director. And I was in awe of my father because I was like, you know, he was, he was very affluent and, and no, no one would take us in when my mom was abused because they were terrified of dad. And guess what's being repeated here again in Somi's life. When I started speaking out against and posting, Somi Ali became the most hated girl, woman in India, okay? I started getting DMs that I cannot tell you how disgusting they were. And they were all from, majority of them were from women. And so my therapist said, stop reading your DMs and block your comments. Only people you follow should be able to comment on your Instagram and stop reading your DMs. So then, um, I spoke to Manisha. Manisha was a very close friend of mine. And uh, I spoke to her two months ago. And, uh, you know, she was, you know, she she reminded me about this famous thumbs up incident. Uh, I don't know if you remember, but um, would you like me to get into that? Because that was. No, please. please yeah. uh, or a gist of it or whatever. Basically. No, it was basically there was rum in the thumbs up. Salman was disapproving of it. It's the first time I was trying alcohol. And Manisha said he poured the thumbs up on my head, but the story came out. He banged the bottle, which was ridiculous because I would have been hospitalized. Mm -hmm. um, but that's tabloids, right? For you back in the 90s. And um, Manisha said, either you come with me now or you go with him. And guess what I did? I went with him. So uh, that caused a rift between our friendship because she stood up for me in front of Salman. And that's a big deal. She was doing Khamoshi with him at the time. And um, so, uh, you know, I spoke uh, just to her. Just a small inter interjection, yeah? Uh, no. Somi, did you, though you were very young, did you at any stage feel that there is, a, you know, there's this force that tries to control all the people and that if you speak against it, then everybody turns against you. Were you able to sense that feeling? Not when I was young, because I I was uh, I I was very angry. I had a lot of rage in myself in me when I was young because I had flown, sought someone that far, and do you know how many people have crushes on Tom Cruise? And Katie Holmes was Tom Cruise's fan, and she ended up marrying him, and then turned out to be a completely idiotic following Scientology. L. Ron Hubbard, a science fiction writer, for crying out loud. I mean, Jesus Christ, give me a break. I mean, they're uh, talk about, uh, you know, defying logic and rationale at every level. So um, Katie Holmes was one of the lucky ones. So I was one of the lucky ones. I actually ended up meeting Salman, living with him for three years. Uh, prior to that, I lived in on Mount Mary in front of Zenith and Mazarpai and Jackie and Aisha's house, apartment building. And uh, eventually I moved in with Salman. Uh, and we, uh, so uh, in America, they say first floor. Uh, uh, in India and Pakistan, we say ground floor. So it, it, we, he had a property on the ground floor. So I, uh, he said, look, I'm never going to leave my parents. And I said, I totally understand. And he said, why don't you decorate the ground floor and make that our apartment? Because on the first floor is it was... The same, uh, yeah, is it the same galaxy, galaxy apartment? Yes, yes. So on the ground floor, I decorated, I went and I was, I used to like marble a lot. And um, because in our house in Pakistan, it was filled, the whole house was marble. And uh, so Salman took me to a marble factory in India and uh, in Bombay. And uh, I picked out blue marble for the, the kitchen 
uh, I believe for the living room. And I designed the whole ground floor apartment where we both lived uh, for three years. How old uh, was he? So, me? so uh, when I met Salman, he was 27. I was 16. And um, now, uh, if you think about it, uh, if I'm 37 and someone's 48, I can still converse with that individual at this level. But when I'm 16 and the person's 27, that's a pretty significant age gap, right? So, um, and also I had dropped out of ninth grade. I, I, I was lacking uh, in education and, and I, I, I correlate ignorance to laziness. Anyone who is ignorant is because they're lazy to uh, research and get educated. I, that's how I correlate it too. I think that's complete laziness. And um, because I worked my butt off when I came yeah. back to America. You, uh, yeah, going back to the decoration that yes. So yeah, so yeah. I, I, I said, Salman, I want to decorate this like an American apartment. And I want the, the kitchen and the living room to be right in front of each other. And there, I don't want a door for the kitchen. And it was a small space. And I decorated the whole uh, ground floor apartment, and that was our apartment. And every night, uh, we call it entourage. I used to call them, uh, you know, um, excuse my butt lickers, pardon my French. But, uh, you know, every night there was an entourage of, of uh, alcohol sessions. And I remember coming out in my my pajamas with Mickey Mouse because I brought them from America and coming out at like three o'clock and I would say, Salman, um, when are you coming to bed? It's so late, it's three o'clock. And he said, like I was like a little five-year-old, right? So, and he's sitting with like Sajid Nadiyad Bala, Ketan Desai, Sanju and you know, whoever Nadim and whoever his entourage was at the time and whoever they are now, I don't know, I could care less. Um, but there were many nights that I encountered that. And I was like, well, uh, do I really want to be married to someone who's going to be having an entourage and drinking sessions every night? And I'm going to be in my PJs and asking, when are you coming to bed? Um, so I started, my mind started thinking, and this is now I'm at like 20, right? I'm approaching yeah. Uh, where your brain is starting to uh, fully develop yeah. by the time you're 25. So I'm evolving as, as uh, even though without education, I'm evolving as a person, as an individual. Yes. And I'm understanding that all these people who were claiming to care for me and telling me that they want to marry me, they love me, and they, they will break up their engagements and their marriages. And, it was complete horse crap. And I realized that they were using me like a piece of meat. And um, I, you know, uh, not too long ago when I, uh, Prashant started doing my uh, public relations, who I, I must say is, is a wonderful person. He, he reconnected me with Sunil, Vivek Obroy, uh, uh, Kamal Sadana, he was a very good friend of mine. We did a movie, 90% we shot it, and it was Sheldon, was such a good character. Finally, when I got interested in, in acting, and I actually got a hang of it with Om Puri Ji and Jitu Ji, and, and I played Julie Bindas, like in this movie, right, with Kamal. The, the producer turns out to be a con artist, some lady, and the food, she disappears. And I was so upset because I was Julie Bindas, and I had never spoken Mumbai ki zaban, uh, Mumbai ki, you know, gaile thi yeah. or kareli thi and all that stuff. So I was super excited. And actually, Salman used to help me rehearse because I didn't know how to speak in that manner. He used to help me rehearse those dialogues. I remember I did a film with Pranal Mehta, Sam Jay Mehta. I had to ride a motorcycle. We went to Joggers Park at 3 a.m. and Salman taught me in two hours how to ride a motorcycle. Then I had to drive a stick shift. Now in America, I was driving only uh, uh, automatic cars. 
So yeah. uh, Salman taught me again at Jogger's Park how to drive a stick shift. Because in a movie uh, called Chuk with Jutuji, there was a scene where we go and bury the dead body of Om Puriji and I have to drive the car. And I was petrified because Jituji is like mom's, like, like you know, Sri Devi, Himmat Mala, and my Gai Mujhe Teri Judai, and mom says he cheats on her. And she would explain the movies because I couldn't understand, like, why is Rekha mad at Jituji? Like, you know, what's going on? I didn't understand, like, he had sex with another woman. And all the, you know, mom would later explain the scripts as I got older. Um, but... I was very nervous in the car with Jituji and you know, so all these experiences and when I was actually getting a hang of it and Om Puriji, he knew I was petrified, unnerved to the T because Om Puriji also acted in Mississippi Masala. He was also a Hollywood actor and, and um, like Irfan, late Irfan, uh, a phenomenal actor. Lunchbox is one of, of my favorite movies. And so uh, I was I was like, oh my God, how am I going to act with Om Puriji and Jituji? Oh my God, Himmatwala, the, the, the matkas that came in my mind with Sri Devi, that Kalsa and all that stuff. And, you know, mom used to watch all that stuff. Mm -hmm. So um, Jituji was like, kya hua? Uh, dari vi kyun ho? So I said, Jitu ji, mujhe ye abhi do ghatteen ghante pehle raat ko sikhai gai ye stick shift chalana mein America mein auto, ma, uh, automatic gaadi chalati thi. So he said, daro nahi, mein hoon saath mein aur mein jaisa bolta hoon, waisa karo. So finally I managed to clutch and, you know, the first and then got to the fourth gear or whatever. And, and um, I, I will never forget uh jitu ji he um and there were there were three people that took a stand for me one was manisha and she said so me after the thumbs up incident she said come and stay with me um i'll take care of you and i should have taken her advice but i i have promised my therapist i'm going to forgive that girl that young girl and then there was jitu ji who noticed that there's something wrong with her. He was very, very intuitive and very, he could tell. And he took me in my makeup room and he said, Beta, tum kuch, kuch problem hai tumme, kuch, tumme koi cheez sata rahi hai. Tum batao mujhe, main madad karta hon tumhari, tum mujhe batao. To, uh, uh, I said, nahi Jitu ji, kuch bhi nahi hai, aisi koi baat nahi hai. Achha. Then Satish Shah um, was in Tisra Kong with me, which I had a blast. It was with Junkie, and Junkie's hilarious. And so um, Satish Shah used to call me, instead of Somi Ali, Sehmi Ali. Sehmi is a word both in Hindi and Urdu. And Sehmi Ali is a person who's very timid and petrified at all times. Yeah. And you can yeah. see it in their face. And I, I didn't, I tried to put up a brave front, but these actors and much older than myself, these people, they recognized it. I couldn't recognize it. And, um, you know, it was just, they could tell. And um, anyway, it got to a point where uh, my first uh, sh uh, time facing the camera was with Sanju in Goa in a song called Dil to Khoya Ye Pe Kahin Pe. And I was so nervous because I remember Sanju from Rocky, uh, uh, Tera Naam, or with T and I thought Tina Muni was the most beautiful woman outside of Rekha, Rekha's number one, then Kajol, Rani, and I thought Alia and Deepika, they're all gorgeous, stunning, right? But Rekha, I think, today, Rekha, Smita Patel, Nandita Das, I used to go for those those I, beauty lies in the eyes of the beholder. And I thought there was no woman prettier than Rekha because I saw Umrao John as a kid. And my mom explained to me that no one would take her because she was deemed impure. And I still didn't understand what mom was talking about. But then again, I watched it at 30. And I was like, oh my God, this poor woman what a sad story and i learned that it was based off of a urdu novel then i saw rekaji's interview with simi gurva who's an amazing amazing host by the way um 
And Rekaji said she had never learned how to dance. She never knew Urdu. She never had any training. And I was bewildered and just like, I was, my mind was like, what? It was like, like, and this is the talent this woman is oozing out of her body. I mean, I, I, I mean, I'm a diehard Rikaji fan. So coming back to um, the promises that were made, I uh, decided to forgive those people. And um, because Tali uh, um, I, my, my mistake, and my therapist corrects me every time I say that. So I'll say this. I did not know I was uh, in the unknown category that I was being taken advantage of. But the people who were doing the deed knew what they were doing. And so how did you break off? I'm sorry? How did you break off and go? How do you, how do you what? Did you break off? You know, from the relationship. How did you break oh, off okay. from the so, so it got really bad towards the end. Um, I was 24 and I had fallen off a horse uh, when I was 16 and I landed on my uh, lower vertebrae. It was L4, L5, S1. And uh, as time progressed, I developed degenerative disc disease. And uh, on top of that, um, I always had back pain problems because of the fall from the horse. And they put me on a horse with no horse training. And I think Tinu, uh, who was the fight action director in those days? Tinu. Tinu. Uh, was Nuan. it Tinu? Uh, yes. Uh, yes. Yes. Yeah. And I remember the horse, they put me on the horse and the horse took off. It galloped and it threw me on my back on rocks and destroyed my lower vertebrae. As time went on, I was only 16. And the violence that was endured and being thrown around like a rag doll, it worsened the situation to a level where I was bedridden at 24. And Hamdil Dechuke Sanam was being shot at that time. And uh, uh, there were visits by the, the actor, leading actress, uh, in the gym, in our in our ground apartment, ground floor apartment, to Salman because he had just come out of prison from the Black Buck case. It was around that time, and um, I came to know that there were not just visits; there was more to it. By one of the the helpers, uh, they would they told me what was going on. So I thought it was time to move on. Uh, my back is. I can't, I can barely, I was emaciated, I fainted. Ketan Desai actually lift me up and carried me to the bedroom. I was not eating, I was very ill, and uh, I was in a very, very bad mental state. And I realized that it is time now, Somi, you need to go back to America and you need to start from scratch. And yeah. And that's when I, 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 I decided, okay, I, I worked in an immigration office at answering phones. Uh, at, at one point, I'm with Om Puri and Jutuji, and then uh, I did a cameo for Chi Chi um, uh, in a, a, I forget the name of the film, but he said to me, can you do a cameo for me? And I said, I will do anything for you. You're like the nicest guy. And uh, so I did a cameo for Chi Chi. And then I, I called mm -hmm. dad. Govinda? Yes, Chi Chi. Uh, Govinda, uh, yes. So Govinda's uh, uh, manager was Shashi Sinha, who was also my manager. Prior to Shashi Sinha, Pankaj Karbanda, who Sanjay Dutt's manager, was my manager. And um, so um, I did a cameo with Govinda in one of his movies. And after that, I, I called Dad and I said, Dad, um, I, I would like for you to send me a ticket um to first to pakistan and then i just want to stay in a hotel i don't want to stay in your house because you know the uh, he was with his wife and i i didn't want to deal with that so oh, he booked me in a hotel me? yeah so before you continue could you also narrate the incident where you trusted some journalists and you opened up your uh, mind 
and uh, there was some uh, oh, you, know, you felt yes and yes 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 so so this journalist had i think he was uh, uh, about a year or two out of uh, journalism school um and a really wonderful guy and i told him everything and because I have no filter and I was gullible and I was not street smart. So I told him about the people that told me that they love me and I should leave the guy and, and the people I was having affairs with. And because I was told only men can do it. You can cause you're a girl. And I was like, I'll show you cause I was my mom's daughter. So uh, I confided in, every little detail the next thing i know this journalist comes out with an article about everything i told him and i was aghast at how he broke my trust then i find out he when i came back to america and i, I drowned myself into education you either go through the self-destructive path and do drugs and alcohol or you go and and go you know, better yourself as a person and you heal through a different, a different way. And I chose, of course, the latter. I did not, I was not interested in drugs and alcohol and all that stuff. And, um, I drowned myself in education and, um, I read textbooks before the semesters. I was the biggest nerd in college. And my best time in my life was when I was in college. If anyone asked me, when were you the happiest? I would say when I was learning about Virginia Woolf, Emily Dickinson, Edgar Allan Poe, those were my happiest days of my life. 1920s writers and Picasso and Van Gogh and their lives. And cause, cause there's a very thin line between creativity and madness. And if you notice from Johnny Depp, who was very abused as a child, uh, he's one of the top actors of Hollywood. Um, he, he became successful. Hitler was very abused. He was a sociopath and a horrible human being. Stalin, abused again in childhood, horrible human being. Somi Ali, abused many a times throughout her life chose the path to start a nonprofit, drowned in education and and you know decided to to leave but this I'm gentleman a- this this journalist eventually became an editor of that magazine and he became a part of the entourage of the individual yeah. and um i couldn't believe it and he had the gall while we were shooting for discovery plus because I have blocked this individual and he called me from an unknown. Now unknown numbers are usually FBI or police departments. So I answered the phone. It was a break during filming during lunchtime. And the, uh, so this gentleman calls me who, who's now a producer of films. And he says, you're on speaker. And he said, you will benefit more if you don't speak ill about this individual in Discovery Plus, if you were to say what the truth was. And I said, who are you with? And he said, well, I'm with him and you're on speaker. And I said, why are you calling me? I told you, I wanna have nothing to do with you after that article. And he said, are you ever gonna forgive me for that article? I said, no, because friends don't uh, betray friends' trust. and in my book, if you stab me and and, and deceit uh, are deceitful toward me once, uh, there's you're out. I don't give you three strikes. You don't get three strikes. I'm sorry. I I just don't do that. So I said, why are you calling me? He said, listen, this individual just wants to talk to you, and he's on speaker, and you're on speaker. So I said, I do not have a word to say to him. So he said, hello, Sony. So I said, what can I do for you? So he said, oh, what can you do for me? And I said, yeah, what do you want from me? What can I do for you? Why are you calling me? I blocked you. What do you want from me? And he said, who do you think you are? And I said, listen, MF, go F yourself and never call me again. And I hung up the phone. Then 
I sent the, the journalist friend an audio text, which I shared with you, because before hanging up the phone, that gentleman said, what bad have I ever done to you? And that question was, I mean, you're not answering that question, asking that question to a 17 year old, uh, you know, shy, timid Sammy Ali anymore. You're answering a question to a middle-aged woman who is fighting human traffickers, has a gun pointed to her head, has had several attacks, and, and really doesn't give a crap about who you are. Because if you come to America and you walk in a mall, no one even look at you twice. You're nothing. You are absolutely nothing. And you're, I never went to America, to India for your acting skills. I had a crush on you because I thought you were hot. And I was 16. And I always thought Shark was a better actor and an actual actor. I always thought that this person could never act. And I stick to that to this day. Now, uh, do you, would you like me to uh, talk a little about the recent yes. article about the Bishnoi tribe? Yeah, please. Okay. Yes. So, so Hindustan Tar Times uh, did an article, and I, uh, I have you know certain beliefs and, and idiosyncrasies or traits or beliefs or whatever that I abide by in my life, um, and I'm very against the death penalty. And because when we didn't have DNA back in the day, a lot of innocent people were killed. And I think a death penalty uh, to a child molester is giving him an injection to go to sleep and he goes to, to sleep and dies very peacefully. And that is not justice in my mind. So I'm always again, I've always been against the death penalty. So I made a statement, even though I have, blocked this individual from every uh, media platform, his family, his relatives, his people he knows, anyone. No one can access me on Instagram unless he's got minions everywhere and they probably follow my Instagram. But um, so I said that I would like to say that if it were Shark, if it were my neighbor, if it was Salman, if it was anyone, I told the, the journalist uh, for Hindustan Times that I would say that, that that is a wrong thing that was conducted by this tribe. Now, keep in mind, I don't know anything about who these people are. All I know is that Salman would not take me hunting because I would cough and make the animal go away. So that's all I remember that why I was not taken on Hamsap Sat Sat or whatever. Thank God I didn't go for that. And um, it was a blessing in disguise. And, and I don't deem hunting uh, animals as a sport. I don't find anything funny or attractive in killing animals as a sport. I find it disgusting, despicable, and uh, just, just, uh, Re repugnant it's dis despicable to me i despise anyone who deems hunting as a sport yeah there's a photo of trump's son with some animal and he's standing like like he's some great guy or whatever he's an idiot he's a fool he's an ignorant fool so i carry the same sentiments but i do not think that salman or even my neighbor should be held, uh, 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 you know, uh, should be murdered or, or should be killed. And keep in mind, uh, if the walls could talk in my apartment on Mount Mary, you would probably literally fall off of your chair of what I've endured in those eight years, uh, even in the apartment and also in Sirac Hotel and also in Vindiachal when I lived there. You will. It's so bad, um, and they corroborated my 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 uh, abuse from my maid servant in India, BBC London. They had he had that article dropped. Now this woman is sixty five. She was my shadow. She stood up to me to this man at forty five, and she said, 
साहब भाई इस बच्ची को मत मारो आप मुझे मार लो इस बच्ची को मत मारो बिकॉज वट हैपन इज आई स्टार्ट शोइंग अप ऑन सेट्स विद ब्रूज एंड पीपल वुड नो दिस एंड दे वुड से uh ajay shelar was a makeup artist i don't know where he is now but he was my makeup artist and uh they would say put pounds and pounds of foundation on her cover her bruises she can't shoot a, a song like this and um so people noticed and i was abused in public and everyone every tabloid you pick up from the 90s it it's very blatant and everyone knows and you know i had confided in some people and especially that reporter who said everything uh except i became the bad person in it because i had affairs and i was not supposed to have affairs because he was a man and he could do it and but i shouldn't have done that so i was blamed in that article it was a very negative piece on me i still have it and i i will never forget it and i will never forgive him for that um so um i said uh, him a very similar a very similar thing happened recently when we watched the interview of a lady also a film journalist who said uh, who had to say some very bad things about you and then uh, you reiterated uh, you spoke to me and you said that's it that's all a lie and uh, uh, you know she was very close to me uh, when i was there in bonapar Yeah so I I was very baffled uh I forget her last name but I remember Sydney she used to come to Sirac hotel she, and we would have tons and tons of food I would order room service because I was a brat and I, I would have conversations with her about you know actors and and you know I I had no aspirations of becoming an actor I came there for another reason and um i always found her to be very kind very polite very nice and then all of a sudden a friend of mine an indian uh a, a canadian indian who resides in america he uh sent me a video and tagged me in it where it says that this lady is saying that somi had cancer she did five movies and that also she got अब वो सलमान ने दिलाई है उसको फिल्में और अब वो अच्छी लगती है एक्स्ट्रा ऑर्डिनरी लुकिंग भी नहीं थी अच्छी लगती है अब हमें पता है क्यों अच्छी लगती है अब यू नो व्हाट दे आर इंप्लाइंग दे आर इंप्लाइंग आई हैव प्लास्टिक सर्जरी व्हिच इफ आई डू हैव आई विल शाउट इट एट द टॉप ऑफ माय लंग्स बिकॉज़ आई आई हैव नो फॉर्म्स लुक इफ यू आर नॉट हैप्पी विद योर फेस इफ यू आर इफ यू हैव अ एसिड बर्न विक्टिम व्हिच वी डू टेक पीपल दैट आर एसिड बर्न विक्टिम्स एंड गेट देम प्लास्टिक सर्जरीज or if you don't like your nose fix it if that builds your self esteem do it if i feel that i somewhere i'm feeling a a little in iota or a speck of low self esteem and i need to do something to my face i will go for it i have no qualms about it but that did affect me as much as the fact that she said she had cancer and she got five movies from salman because that those two lies number one uh, uh someone who was very close to me like a sister and who stood up for me and i will never ever forget her and eternally be grateful to her and that is manya manisha she has been someone who went through cancer and i couldn't reach out to her i didn't know where she was i didn't i was so disconnected i didn't know how to reach out to her during that time you don't throw around the word cancer uh like it's a cough and a cold and my mother's older sister died of breast cancer a year and a half ago so when my mom saw that video she was bawling for hours She asked me how many times have I gotten my mammogram done? I told her, I reassured her, I get it every year. I'm up to date with my mammograms. And I said, "Mommy, this person, she used to be very nice. I still gave her the benefit of doubt. Think about that. Because when when people go low, I try to go high. I'm not going to stoop down to their level because I know that Simmy 
her career is kind of no longer there anymore. She's like a has been. And for someone, I'm going to be nasty here, but for someone to walk around with that face, to have the audacity to say that I had plastic surgery is, is very comedic for me. And I'm going to be nasty and I'm never nasty, but that really upset my mother. And that's why I'm saying this. So to throw around the word cancer like that and to lie about getting films, I got films from Shashi Sina and Pankaj Karbinda and Karbanda. And those two secretaries are the ones who got me movies. My first audition was for Dharamji's film, uh, Barsat or Champion, which ended up with Tina uh, Kanna, uh, uh, Akshay's wife. Uh, and it was called, I think, Bursat. I don't know what happened to the film. But I uh, I auditioned with Shekhar Kapoor for the film. And I was terrible because I, I, I had no inclination of doing films. But I was spotted in Siroc Hotel by Dharamji's assistant, um, who's no longer uh, alive. And may he rest in peace. He was a wonderful gentleman named Deepak. And he uh, brought my photo to Dharamji. And Dharamji said that ye iska look bahut zinataman parveen bobby aur iski naak mujhe mumu ki yaad aati hai mumu dharamji kehte the mumtaz ko iski naak mujhe mumu ki yaad aati hai aur iske jo cheekbones aur iska bahut western aur iski jo smile hai wo bahut innocent hai to unhone mujhe apne ghar bulaya phir humne unhone bataya acha wo urdu likhte hain और मैं भी उर्दू लिखती हूँ क्योंकि आठ साल की उम्र तक उर्दू जो हमने सीखी थी पाकिस्तान में मुझे अभी तक याद है तो एंड आई यूज टू डू माई डायलॉग्स इफ इफ द राइटर्स न्यू हैव राइट उर्दू आई वुड रिक्वेस्ट एम टू राइट एम इन उर्दू बिकॉज आई कैन रीड दैम एंड टू डेट आई कैन रीड एंड राइट उर्दू एंड एंड इन द एंड इट्स हिंदी एंड उर्दू आर बहने एज काका जी से बावची हिंदी और उर्दू बहने हैं Then we're all the same. We all bleed red. I don't see any religion. Good crap! I don't. I don't. I don't have that mindset. I've evolved to a level where I do not. I like I said, my the real heroes are the people, as Denzel Washington said, are ready to take a bullet in their face to keep us safe, and the Javans at, in India or any other country. and jay hind and i salute those soldiers that protect us and because my grandparents and my father are are indian and we're all indian because there was no pakistan and i'm a huge gandhi follower i'm a pacifist and uh i have learned to extrapolate the bad from the individual because like i said none of us are good none of us are bad of course the extremes like Ted Bundy and you know the serial killers and all that stuff but you know what i'm talking about we're all cafeteria uh people we're all grocery shop people we pick and choose what suits us to our conveniences and that's how we live our lives and i think people have forgotten that they have to die and and they have to face whatever it may be and i think that that's they need to be reminded of that but anyway coming back to your question uh uh i i was uh very uh appalled by the shooting outside because keep in mind i lived in that house for 3 years i ate their food every lunch it was with salman di and salim uncle salman di is maharashtrian uh malaika is christian ammu malaika sister amrita is christian uh seema was is hindu they're no longer together i know but i know they got married in front of me so elan seema um salman ji's real name is chandni aunty her her brother dilip uncle was my dentist i in in Mumbai. so did you uh, so did you at any time uh, really bond with the family absolutely i was i was uh, first of all i was a little confused because i was in the middle of a car car uh, back seat with helen auntie on this side and salma auntie on this side and we were all going shopping so i was not able to understand the what was going on here 
it, it was a brand new phenomena for me that, okay, so Salman, Arbaz, and Sohail, Alvira, Arpita, call Helen, Auntie Mom, and, uh, and, and there's no malice anywhere. And there, Salman, Auntie, and Helen, Auntie are friends. And uh, that's the way of their lives. And that's how they live. So I loved them both equally. And Gianni Auntie, Salman, Auntie was my Austrian. And I used to, I remember, I used to, um, she used to, uh, she couldn't read Arabic, right? So I could read Arabic because I was forced to, as a child, read the Quran, uh, having been raised Muslim. Um, so I could read Arabic, so I would read it for her and translate it for her. And I remember the most beautiful thing I had ever seen was in their bedroom. There was a mandir. Right next to the mandir, there was a Quran. And then I realized Sima was Hindu, Soil was Muslim, Salman was Muslim, uh, and Salmanti was Hindu, Salim uncle was Muslim, and Salmanti's entire family was Maharashtrian. And Malaika and Amur Christian and Arbaz was Muslim. And I realized that they do not ever, ever make a distinction of anyone's class, creed, or religion. And that is the one thing I will never forget that I attained from that household and Salman T and Salim Uncle, um, the wisdom that I learned that you do not do not indulge or engage in any debate or conversation about bigotry and racism. And we are all one, irrespective of who we believe in. I don't care if you worship a frog. If that makes you happy, so be it. Worship the frog, go all the way. I don't care if you worship a snake or a cockroach. I don't care. Be a good human being and stop this hatred, discriminatory mindset against our gay brothers and sisters. Because we're in 2024, no one picks to be gay. It's hard enough to be straight. Trust me, you're hearing this from someone who's straight. It's hard enough to leave, lead a life being a straight human being, let alone how to, to accuse someone of picking to be gay is the most atrocious, irrational thing I've ever heard. It's a sexual orientation, and to quote Lady, Lady Gaga, we're born this way. So anyways, coming back to the Vishnoi tribe, if you would like me to continue. Yeah, um, please, please. So I, um, I, in the interview, I said, I, I you know, I want to or I Salman to give you or I want to May ye aapse please request karti hu ki ye 1998 ka ye kissa hai aur unse galti ho gayi unse mistake ho gayi aur hum sab galtiyan karte hain because i know i know the ego that that in the individual carries so um and and if he does hear this or watch this and i since i blocked him from everywhere and i have no inclination in rekindling or reunifying the relationship or or a friendship i have no interest in talking to him or this article was not to oh and oh the trolls when this article came out i had to go god i had to stop reading them isko dekho ye wapas jo hai salman ke piche ab ab iski tarife kar rahi hai i am not doing tarife i'm saying don't murder the man you idiots you cannot you cannot get justice by killing a person violence begets violence so uh, so so me yes. what you're saying is that see uh, that they want to murder him because he killed the black man. correct is it as simple as that i'm sorry is it as simple as that? I, I see. I I don't want to say much because I don't have a lot of knowledge in that in this subject. I had to research online a couple of days ago when the shooting took place, and I I learned that when the black buck was killed, the the Vishnoi tribe, the 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 guy who's in prison now, I believe, was seven. 
He's now 32 and he was all his life, he was told that he has to avenge or, 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 or vindicate the family uh, because of what occurred. Now, I know Salman well enough that I know that he did not know and he does not have the wherewithal or the knowledge to ascertain that that was something that was worshipped. So, for example, uh, today I had the FBI call me. We have a girl from Delhi that was human trafficked here, and she's 19, and she was brought through Shadi.com, which is a very normal thing, which we'll delve into at a later point. And so the agent calls me and says, I brought a beef burger. She's not eating them. I said, I have given you a menu for women from India, young girls, if they're vegetarian, if they're non-vegetarian, you have to ask them. I've given you a please refer to that menu. She ended up eating a chicken sandwich. I, he said, she, she doesn't want to wear tampons. And I said, yes. I never wore tampons. I don't wear tampons. We wear pads. And it's there's a stupid belief system that if you wear a tampon, your hymen is broken and you're no longer. It's a stupid, dumbass belief or whatever. But I've worn pads all my life. Why change now? Right? So I said, go buy the 19-year-old kid pads. What is your problem? Get her a chicken sandwich and get her pads. So People are oblivious to all this stuff. So now, for, for example, when Salman did, and I was not there to cough out loud, uh, did kill, he was not knowledgeable of the fact that, and I'm, I'm, I'm making an assumption here. I don't know this, but I know Salman well enough that I know that he didn't think that that was a god that they worshipped, right? So, um Something very beautiful that just I thought of that uh, uh, Salim uncle never ate a uh, uh, pig because in Islam, uh, sorry, Salim uncle never ate uh, beef because Hindus don't eat beef and their love for each other. Johnny auntie, Salma auntie never ate a uh, pig because Muslims don't eat pig. And I thought that was such a beautiful gesture of love that you you respect one another and you you sacrifice something as small as you know i think it's a big deal uh and but you know when i was a kid i i found that such a sweet gesture of love uh, but again coming back to i don't think salman actually i can guarantee it he did not know that they worshiped that as a god and he enjoyed hunting and i went with him three times every single time i prayed please god whoever you are don't let there be an animal be spotted and then i would fake sneezes and fake coughs those every three those three incidents we never caught an animal salman said next time tum nahi so, I mean, the logical answer to that was my coughing and the animal running away. But whatever he wants to believe, if he thinks I have a connection with higher power, hey, why not? That's great. So I think the reason I gave that interview was not to rekindle, reunify, get in his text, his good books. I don't want to make a comeback. I have no interest in Bollywood. I have no interest in, in benefiting from anyone. I'm, I've been boycotted, uh, in fact, for speaking against him. Uh, and, and he's told everyone not to talk to me. So the people I reconnected with from Vivek O'Broy to, uh, you know, uh, a lot of people, uh, Sonu Sood, I never knew him, but I asked for his number from Prashant and, um, and I, I left him a voice note and I said, Sonu, I don't know you, but my name is Somi Ali and you probably, I don't think you, if you know me. And I just want to say, I want to commend you on all the good work that you've been doing. Cause I saw his 
real estate or very charitable. And he immediately wrote back a voice note and said, of course I know you. You, we belong to the same, same film fraternity. Of course I know you. If there's anything I can do for you, please let me know. And um, then I read an article from Kangana Ranawit that I will be your voice in the wings. And I put a post of Kangana and I said, I'm taken aback by this young lady. And um, I said, I need her number. I asked Prashant to get me her number. And I send her a, a, a voice note and I said, Kangna, I just want to say that you have so many good things for me. I don't know you too. And you are very small. So you told me to say it because she referred me as Somi G. And you know, I, I hate that kind of stuff. So I said, you told Somi to say it. Yeah, I didn't know her age. I thought she was 22 or 25 because I'm very out of touch. So I didn't know. I thought she was like 25 or something. So I said, Aap mujhe so, me bhi kahiye. so um, when Salman saw that article, I'll be your voice in wings, two days later, guess who's on the set of Big Boss? Kangana Ranawi. Mm. So now I know why I was going to be, someone was going to be my voice in wings and what occurred because I'm not Sami Ali, I'm Somi Ali, and I understand the game of chess. And I understand who's making what move for what benefit and what they're up to. And I have evolved in a such a manner that I cannot tell you. Yeah. So on this note, we'll end this session. Somi, yes. and then we'll connect on the uh, and another session with Somi. Yes. So friends, a very interesting talk with Somi, who's uh, grown over the years and uh, is doing a lot of good work which we will hear more in the coming sessions. So thank you, Somi, for this lovely session. Are you kidding spoken? me? Thank you. It's a privilege. My mom is going to be so excited. She loves you, absolutely loves you. And I think there's a photo of yours in, in one of your, uh, I think it's your photo with your hair. And my mom was like, she's so beautiful. And I was like, I know. And look how honest she is. And my mom's like, she's so beautiful. I was like, mom, look how honest she is. As an activist, I'm, I'm more focused on that, right? So I'm like, she's so honest. She's, she's amazing. And, and I want to have a talk show and I want to, I want to, I want to follow in her footsteps and conduct real journalism. And so I'm a huge fan of yours. And, and it's an honor and a privilege to be on your show. And thank you for even allowing me to uh, give my voice to people that are in fact in domestic violence relationships, children who are being sexually abused, our gay community, our brothers and sisters, if they need help, please contact No More Tears. We're here to help you. I don't care if you're in yeah. India. Thank you for the yes. friends yes, below. So you can reach out to Somi and her. Yes, you know, her absolutely. Solution. Absolutely. Thank you, people. Mina. Have a wonderful Jai night. Hin. And Jai, Jai Hind. Jai Hind. Yes, yeah. absolutely. 